How many will admit that when you were a kid and there was something wrapped under the tree, you would like pick it up and shake it, you know, try to figure it out, kind of, you know, is that a puzzle? Is that something I'm going to be mad about? Is that that real toy that I wanted, right? Uh, I remember when my son was two years old, and I was a rookie mom, right? I didn't know what I was doing. And so I wrapped up something, and I put it under the tree, but I put it under a little too early, right? And uh, his favorite cartoon at the time was VeggieTales, because that was back in the VeggieTales day. That's vintage. You should do a little ve VeggieTales. Let's bring VeggieTales back. But... So I, I bought him this Bob the Tomato, and it was a talking Bob the Tomato, and I wrapped it up, and I didn't put it in a box. Like I said, I was a rookie mom, and I put it under the tree, and so he goes over there. He grabs that thing, and the button goes off, and it says, hi, I'm Bob the Tomato. God loves you. God made you special, and he loves you very much, whatever that thing was, right? And I was like, the look on his face, he looked at me. He's like, I know what it is. You're busted, Mom. <laughs> From then on, I learned my lesson. And the gifts went out on Christmas Eve while the kids were asleep, right? You learn as you go. We're talking about unwrapping the gift of who Jesus is this Christmas. Who is Jesus really to us? And how can we unwrap who Jesus is? is in our lives. And I don't know if you remember back in school, I don't know if it was middle school or high school where they would make us diagram sentences. You remember that, Pastor Kim? You know, they would teach you, you know, circle the noun and underline the adjectives and all of that. Well, I, I want to point out uh, and give you a refresher because I know middle school was a while back for some of us, right? The adjectives were, were those words that described another word, right? Uh, like the red ball, right? Like the shiny Christmas tree, uh, the gold box, right? The gold, it was the thing that described it. Let me ask you this this morning. If you and I could sit down and have coffee or hot cocoa or hot tea, whatever your thing is, and I asked you, how would you describe Jesus in one word? What would you say? How would you describe who Jesus is to you? Descriptions are important. They bring clarity. They, they bring meaning. They bring significance to God. And I want to ask, who is Jesus to you? He was a man, but he was also God, right? Uh, he was forgiving, but don't mess with him. Remember, he was fierce. Remember in the temple, he turned over those tables. Don't mess with him. He was fierce. He's forgiving, and he's fierce. He's all-powerful, but he was also gentle, with people. He said, let the kids come to me. When they wanted to chase away all the little kids, Jesus said, no, let, let all the little kids come to me. He was a friend to sinners, but he was also a Lord and our Savior. We're going to unwrap the gift of who Jesus is. And I love that the prophet Isaiah, over 600 years before Jesus was born, gives us these adjectives and this detailed description about who Jesus is going to be. And Isaiah is our text this month, Isaiah 9, 6. And it says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called, here it comes, wonderful counselor, mighty God everlasting father, prince of peace. Would you say it with me? Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. That's how they described who Jesus is to you and to me. And last weekend, we talked about Jesus being our wonderful counselor and how he's a counselor with experience. He's a counselor that gives relevance and he's a counselor that gives us assurance. For our future. And Isaiah declares that Jesus is a mighty God. Let me ask you this. When is the last time you experienced Jesus being a mighty God to you? I remember one time many years ago where we didn't have housing and God had told me that we were going to be moving closer to my work. And he said, I'm going to provide a house in this neighborhood. The only problem, it was one of those bougie neighborhoods. You know what I'm talking about? One of those neighborhoods that, like, other people can afford to live in, but not me and my family. But I said, I knew I he heard from God, so I told my husband we're going to live in this neighborhood. And I think he probably thought, wishful thinking, right? I said, no, I heard from the Lord. 
And so I was looking around for houses. Y'all, it had been months and nothing, nothing was coming through. And so one morning, I'm a prayer journaler. Any, any journalers in the house? I like to write down my prayers. I, I get less distracted that way. So I write down my prayers. And I wrote in my prayer journal one morning. I said, God, it was the summer. It was June. I said, God, you said you wanted me to live in this neighborhood. And if you want us here, you got to bring the house to me because I, I got nothing. Amen. Just short and sweet. That afternoon, I'm at work. And I go to the copier, and I'm making a, a copy on the printing machine. And this lady comes up to me that didn't even work in our office. She worked at another office. She said, hey, um, I don't know if you know anybody looking for a house, but I got this house. And this guy gives us an amazing deal. It's so far below market value. And I thought, this is too good to be true. Y'all, we lived in that house, and I raised my family for 12 years in that house. Because our God is a mighty God. And when our God says he's going to do something, he does it. So I want to talk about how God is our mighty God this morning. And I want to welcome up Pastors Kim and Pastor Brandon to the table this morning. Okay, so if you had to describe Jesus in one word, what would it be? What would it be? I think for me. I would describe him as master and oh, not in the sense of, you know, sometimes we take. That's got a negative commentary. Right, it right does. It, but right. you know what? He has had to be the authoritative figure in my life. That's good. Because Kim has the ability to kind of go down those routes, <laughs> right. justify why I'm going right. down it. So I had to be consistent in saying, God, I'm going to give you place of master place of authority in my life. And what I've learned is if I give him full authority, mm. I can conquer. That's good. Yeah. On my own, I'm going to flop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I can stay in the will of God and conquer every yeah. obstacle. Not saying it's hard. Good. It's easy because right. it gets hard. Yeah. And it's a test of my faith. Yeah. But that's what I pull on. Okay, master, where are you? Yep. Because I'm getting a little it. angry, <laughs> and you know your daughter better than she know herself. That's good. Master is my word. What yeah. about you, Brandon? That's good. Yeah, I would. I agree. Um, there's so many, you know, great descriptions right, of right. who Jesus is. Uh, but the word I think I would land on is merciful. Ooh, Love that. Because you, you look at the life of Jesus, and I mean, yeah. we'll just take you know away the cross, which is this yeah. most outrageous thing mm -hmm. that he did, mm -hmm. um, that he didn't have to do. But just some of the nonsense that he put up with, with wow. his disciples yes. at any time, right? He was all powerful, right? He was God incarnate. Yeah. He could have said, you know what? Actually, you're on your own, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you guys yeah. are so frustrating. You're going to yep. send me to the cross to right. uh, die. Uh, you know what? Here. Actually, <laughs> no, right? Lightning or whatever he could do <laughs> and just put an end to it. Uh, I think that if you know, the life of Jesus was in like one of those mm -hmm. Netflix documentaries. Mm -hmm. or something. I mean, right. there would be public outrage of the, how unjust it was. That's right. What That's Jesus right. did for us. That. And it wasn't out of his control. He chose yeah. uh, to go through those things. He That's endured good. those things because uh, he is merciful, right? He, powerful. I love uh, that. He has mercy for us. Yeah. I want to look at the Christmas story and kind of unpack the mystery of what it really means for Jesus to be our mm -hmm. mighty God. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the Christmas story since it's Christmas. But how can we find the mighty God in it? In a Christmas story about a baby, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so I don't know about you, but uh, I've got some favorite Christmas movies that are like on my must-watch mm -hmm. list. It's a Wonderful single... Life better be on that list. I, um, I have to add that one. It's to not that there. List. I have not Come seen on. it. Come on. <laughs> the black and white is like, You don't even know what this. a good Christmas movie is. But hey, I'm, a, I'm of the generation Home Alone 1 and 2. Come on. <laughs> okay. So good. Boy, How, they're this, clapping for home. This alone. poor kid. This happened to him two years in a row. His parents left him. Uh, I love that movie. Those two movies. Uh, Elf. Any Elf people out there? Yeah. Oh uh, the, yeah. The Polar <laughs> Express. Uh, the Santa Claus. Uh, so many good movies. Um, there's just some movies that, that they never get old, right? right? They're just that's there's right. situations in them. They're funny, or they're just uh, they just have a good message. They never go, yeah. and that's the original Christmas story that's as right. well. Yeah. And we go through the original Christmas story every single year, and mm -hmm. you know we're reading it in church together on Sundays. We're also doing it mm -hmm. for youth. Yeah. So I've been really in the Christmas story, um, yeah. and it. It's amazing the yeah. things that happen in the story. If you really right. take a minute right. to just 
pretend like you've never heard it before. Yeah. It's unbelievable what happens, right? right? So right. we'll start here reading. This is what it says in the Bible, Luke uh, 1, 30 through 35. It says, um, this is an angel of the Lord coming to this, this girl who's in high school, right? right. Uh, Mary, <laughs> right. do not be afraid, Mary, the angel mm-hmm. told her, right. for you have found favor. Somebody say favor. Favor. Favor with God, mm. and you will conceive you, and give birth to a son, yeah. and you will name him Jesus. Yeah. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, yeah. and he will reign over Israel Forever. Somebody say forever. Forever. Forever, and his kingdom will never end. Yeah. And Mary, fittingly, this is probably how I would respond if an angel came and told me these things. Uh, she's like, okay, um, <laughs> but how can this happen? You know, right. I'm a virgin. I'm right. going to have a baby. Uh, I, okay. And the angel <laughs> replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon yeah. you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the baby will be born. Yeah. Uh, will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Yeah. So the very first thing, right, first out of the yeah. gate of the Christmas story that we got to understand is that our God does impossible things. That's right. That's right. Yeah. right. The first thing that God does in this story of bringing yeah. Jesus defies the laws of science. It does. Can we be real? Yeah. yeah. On a Sunday morning? Yeah. I don't want to get, you know, explicit here, but we all know <laughs> the rules of how a baby is born. That's right. Right? And Mary is saying... <laughs> Hey, I haven't, um, haven't, I haven't, been there. haven't done that yet. Done I'm that. a virgin, Not right? Yet. I haven't done that yet. That's yeah. right. But God proves just how mighty he is. Wow. He doesn't prove that he's just God, yeah. but he proves that he's a mighty, mighty God, God. God. Yeah. doing yeah. something Good. impossible. Yeah. Right? The inception of the Christmas story literally is out of an impossible yeah. situation. Yeah. Good. And I think a lot of times we underestimate God in our lives. We underestimate a lot of things. Uh, have you ever underestimated someone uh, in your life? Yeah. I, I've got an embarrassing story that I don't. I can't believe I'm going to share, but Uh-oh. I'm going to. I'm going to trust that we're going to keep it here. <laughs> I um, I was a big WWE fan uh, oh, growing okay. up, and I had cousins that wrestled. Okay. So I got into middle school, and that was on the list of things you could do. So I was like, I want to be a wrestler. I want to be, you know, The Rock or you know, yeah. uh, John Cena. Go or I don't want to go pro. This is going to be my <laughs> life. And I joined the wrestling team. First off, nothing like you see on TV. Um, it's a lot more work. And I was, I was in seventh grade. I was like the smallest guy on the team. There's all these big, burly wrestlers. And the only person who was my size was this girl. And I'm like, I don't want to hurt this girl. I'm going to wrestle this girl. Uh-oh. This sweet no, he girl. Didn't. No, Did he, he didn't. go there? You know, all right, we square, square up. And this girl flattens up. me. Pins you. And it happens again she and again. She squared up, Brandon. And I'm like out of breath. And she's like, I'll go, um, I'll go easy on you this time. <laughs> Girl power. So we wrestle again. Still, boom, flattens me on the ground. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, this is, that dream's dead. I, so I quit the wrestling team. <laughs> no more wrestling for me. But, right, that's, uh, hopefully that's a funny story. And we're not going to tell anyone, right? Um, Your secret is safe with us. stay Brandon. here. But, hey, we do that sometimes for God, too. We think, if we're being real this morning, bring it back here. Mm. We underestimate God. We think, oh, it's kumbaya, it's the feel-good Sunday morning, fluffy, God is Mm. cutesy. Mm. But, hey, God is the same God that parted the Red Sea. He's the same God that we read about in the Old Testament that brought down the walls of Jericho. Right? Yeah. We serve a God that created our entire universe yeah. and cosmos. Yeah. That is the same God that lives Good. in our heart, and he can do impossible situations. I yeah. love what Luke uh, one thirty seven says. It says this. It says, for nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing. Nothing, nothing will be impossible with wow. God. That's right. Right. Wow. right. Even in the impossible situations we face, like Mary, where it's like, is this really going to happen? This, yeah. It's not physically possible. Yeah. God says, I am powerful. I'm going to make it happen. And there's nothing that's impossible with me. Yeah. So I want to ask you, how has you know, God shown up in your life and done impossible things? Yeah, well, I've, I've shared before that I come from a really broken, dysfunctional family. Uh, and I remember one time talking to my counselor mm-hmm. and sharing everything that had happened in my past, from sexual abuse to you know, my uncle being in jail for the largest bank burglary in American history. You can look that up later. Uh, But I remember telling her all of these things, and she looked at me, and she goes, you know, it is virtually impossible for you to be where you are today. What happened in your life? Wow. And she goes, your life is a miracle that you came out of that. And I said, it was only Jesus. 
And I said, I gave all glory to God. I'm like, only God could turn me around and, and bring somebody out of that type of brokenness mm -hmm. to earn my doctorate and raise a family and just all of the things, pastor this amazing church. Mm -hmm. uh, so God has just done impossible things. You know, for Pastor me. Beth, I love it. We, we have similar stories. Yes, we do. I'm the youngest of seven children, and there were four girls. So I didn't have the opportunity to be exposed to a lot of the temptations and mm. a lot of the obstacles mm. that my older siblings yeah. did. I saw what happened, and when they got in trouble, mm -hmm. I was like, remember, check, don't do that, <laughs> don't check. Do that. You know, I had an ongoing checklist, right? But I was also always the odd child. Imagine that, me, odd. <laughs> I'm not odd, right? My mom used to say, you're the odd child. Don't say that. I, I, I. You know, but I was always the odd child, and I knew that Jesus must have had a plan for mm, my life. I, right. No matter how much I tried to be bad, it just, I couldn't <laughs> be work. bad good. I just couldn't. <laughs> and I, you know, I wasn't perfect because I tried to be bad, right? Yeah, and yeah. it would end up being more of a mess and stuff. But what I do know is uh, most of our lives, my mom raised us as a single mom. Right. And you talk about dysfunction. Yep. Like I said, we could be cousins. Mm -hmm. be, and we all have dysfunction. That's if right. we really look at how we yep. were brought up, nothing but the grace of God mm. would get us through dysfunction. That's right. And I know that there were people that didn't expect, expect for mm -hmm. Pat's kids to mm -hmm. amount to anything. Mm. And all of us took different avenues in yep. life. But because I was like the odd child, mm -hmm. people never expected me to be the one at a young age to really link hands with God, mm -hmm. really give my life over That's to right. God. There were there were times when I didn't. I right. was like, okay, I'm really odd. Okay, right. I get it, okay? Yeah. Because I choose mm -hmm. to follow Christ. And so when I think about that, I think about how he has provided me so many ways of escape, yeah. right? So many, j just saying, you know, no, the Holy Spirit was there right. early in my life mm -hmm. saying, no, you don't want to go down that route, That's right? Good. And, I, you know, my sister, you know, bless her heart, she's gone on to be with the Lord. I would say, think about Trisha. Remember that time when Trisha, I would just reminisce, yeah. you know, yeah. and, I, and the Lord would just navigate my life mm -hmm. differently. And when I think about that, I go right into that next part of this Christmas story, Pastor yeah. Beth. Yeah. When I think about that, I think about looking at the circumstances around in this mm -hmm. story where mm -hmm. God chose to do the impossible. Right. Pastor Brandon said it. You know, God's salvation plan had three key steps. Yeah. It was an unwed teenage girl mm -hmm. yeah. coming from an ordinary family. Yeah. And this took place in a really small town yeah. named Bethlehem, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's Pastor Beth's name. Amen. Uh, <laughs> let's, you know, we look at the, the different historical facts about Bethlehem alone. Bethlehem means house of bread, house right. of bread. Right. It was small, insignificant um, in biblical times. But the prophet Micah announced that Jesus, mm -hmm. almost 700 years before his birth, right. he announced that Jesus would That's be right. born. Right. And out of all places, God mm -hmm. chose for the birth of his son, this, this special son, to be Good. in this little rinky-dink town <laughs> called Bethlehem. Why do you think he did that? Mm. I'll tell you why. Not only does God do the impossible, but God does his best work in improbable places. Come on. Yeah. That's I've, right. I've seen That's God right. do some impossible things in places where you would not believe That's right. yeah. in my life, right? That's right? There was nothing glamorous about the city of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was a city, it, you know, and if I was God, I'd probably do it mainstream New York. L.A. L.A., Something. yeah, you know, because y'all be looking at the story on, right. you know, right. Good Morning America if it happened in New York, mm -hmm. right? But I probably wouldn't choose this town that was like in the middle of nowhere, you know. But when I look over my life, and I want you to take a moment and look over your life, how has God really done this? God has done his best work in improbable yeah. places. Those impossible things connected to those mm -hmm. improbable places. Mm -hmm. He works in everyday right. ordinary that's people. Good. One of my good. favorite songs, God chooses ordinary people yeah. just like you and me that's right. to do what he commands, right? Mm. You know, it's something significant that I want to just share about Bethlehem, 
Pastor Beth, that's what, this was the city where they raised lambs yeah. um, and yeah. sold them for a sacrifice in the temple, mm. right? So they got these baby lambs, took yeah. them to the church, and sold them as yeah. a sacrifice. That's why we hear about the shepherds. That's why right we hear about there. the shepherds. Yeah. And we think about Jesus being born in this significant wow. place. When I, when I began to study this, I saw the link. Yeah. Yes. Because he was the ultimate sacrifice. Come on. That's awesome. He was the sacrifice. Yes. Born in Bethlehem. No longer do lambs have to be slain right. and offered up. That's right. I'm going to sacrifice my life for a people. Wow. That's I'm good. going to sacrifice my life for Kim. I'm going to sacrifice yes. my life for each and every one of us. Wow. Yeah. Um, before we even knew that Jesus would make the sacrifice, he made that sacrifice for sins, That's good. for all of our sins. And so I love that that was the ultimate sacrifice. Mm. He might work in improbable places, but everything that God does, he yeah. has a purpose to the plan. Yeah. He has a purpose to the plan. So when I think about that, what are the improbable places mm. that God has worked in your lives? Yeah. yeah. I remember back when I was in high school, um, I had some friends who were, you know, in my my friend group, I guess, who uh, considered themselves atheists. And there was this one friend that I had who um, was every time anything was like, you know, mentioned about yeah. my church, it, he would give me a bad time about it. Oh, you know, are you coming to the party? Oh, wait, you can't because church you're boy. a Christian, right? You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, you just yeah, wanna, every just little eat. thing he would do, you know, yeah. every word he would say every time he'd swear, oh, Oh, I'm sorry, church boy, plug your ears, all this sort of thing. And it was just super frustrating. And I remember there was a time once where uh, there was this kind of back office in uh, one of our uh, classrooms. We were a part of um, the student body um, ASB stuff. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, we're planning for something. And just me and him, and he starts crying wow. and telling me about how, you know, he was just depressed wow. and wow. just wanted prayer, wanted me to pray for him and was being earnest. And I, it, like, if you were to ask me before this, I'm like, there's no chance this guy is wow. getting to heaven. There's no chance this, that <laughs> this guy is ever going to want to hear what I have Man to say. Man of faith. Right? Right. <laughs> Man of faith. <laughs> but God was doing something in his life. He was planting seeds. And we prayed. And wow. um, he started coming to church. Mm. Uh, he's, he gave his life to Christ. And wow. uh, just in a situation you never would think, right? right? In a probable situation, right. yeah. in a back office of a school, painting posters or something, yeah. uh, God wow. moved in someone's life. Yeah, yeah. and I, I feel like God found me in an improbable place. I came from a really small town in Ohio. And, uh, you know, my people were just ordinary people. My dad's a truck driver, you know. Uh, and so that God would call me to ministry. And then Greg and I, you know, would meet in Minneapolis, help plant uh, on a church team there, Harlem, New York, all wow. the way the, to Seattle. That's pretty improbable. I mm -hmm. feel like God just found me in a very improbable place and did some impossible things. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I love the part of the Christmas story um, that happened over 2,000 years ago. And like you said, it's a classic. We talk about it every year. Um, but the thing about the Christmas story is it's personal. Uh, the most famous verse in the Bible, uh, John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world, yes. right, that he gave his one and only son, son that whoever believes. believes in him will not perish, perish but have eternal life. Yeah. You know, I think it's easy when I read that verse to think, oh, well, God loves other people in the world, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not quite so sure if, wow. if he really mm -hmm. knew and if you really knew. Yeah what goes on behind the scenes of my heart and my head sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, and it's easy to just depersonalize it, right. you know, that he came for other people. Here's the thing. I don't know if you have noticed this, but with the increase in technology in our society, we have a, a decrease of personal touch. Mm -hmm. I can walk into the grocery store, not talk to a single person, go through self-checkout and go home and not talk to one person. That's right. I can do all of my banking online. I can't remember the last time I went to my bank and actually talked to a banker, yeah. probably when I bought my car a few years ago. Actually, mm -hmm. they make you sit down and talk to right. them. Uh, you know, we can complete degrees online with ever e without even going right. to a classroom, right? right? You can get an online degree these days. Yeah. But the basic human need for each and every one of us is personal touch. And That's right. in fact, there's been research done that uh, babies in orphanages who can be fed 
and have their diapers changed, if they don't get personal touch, they will still get sick and they will die because we need that personal touch. And our God, the mighty God, he makes his plans personal. Mm -hmm. Now, they were personal for Mary and Joseph. Uh, they were personal for me and you. Anybody ever been around somebody and they're just like, hey, I've got this personal bubble. Don't get in my space. Mm -hmm. You know those kind of people? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like a hugger. So I walk into a room and I try to hug people. But I can tell pretty quick when right. somebody's like, hey, this is my personal space. I will give you a fist bump. We can shake hands or maybe even not. Maybe just look at me and say right. hi. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but our God is different. He, he doesn't uh, want to be disconnected mm -hmm. from our lives. That's right. Here's the thing with, have you ever noticed the mightier and the more powerful somebody is, the less access you have to them? Mm -hmm. Like I haven't sat down with coffee from my mayor, right? right. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've been to his office, I've, I've had a conversation, but we just don't go hang out, right? Because the mightier, mightier you are, there's right. usually a disconnect. That's right. But with our God, it's the exact opposite. Instead of a disconnect, he actually draws us in. He's all-powerful. He's almighty, and yet he actually wants to keep us close to him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. And, mm. and God wants this salvation plan to be so personal yes. for us. Yes. I, I don't know um, what kind of gifts. I, I love gifts. I love being a gift giver. And um, So how many know it's nice to get, like, a gift card, but then it's really nice if somebody gives you a personalized gift. Like right. I'm, I'm wearing a, a bracelet. I know you can't see it, but I got it from my cousin, uh, Cherry. She lives in Ohio. And anytime, you know, she says, Hey, I love you. I always respond with love you more. Same thing with my kids. They'll say, mom, I love you. I'm like, no, love you more. Right. So she went out and got this bracelet made. Love you more. Right. Wow. Personally, that, yeah. that says it right on there. And there's something about a personalized gift. Yeah. That, you know, somebody took some time. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody actually really cares. Right. They didn't just go to Safeway, grab something off of that little, you know, gift card thing with the hundreds of gift cards there. Although, I, I love a good gift card. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, just keep them coming. No, just plan. Right. Uh, but God wants us to personalize Christmas mm -hmm. this year. He wants you to know, hey, I actually came for you, Carl. Yeah. Eric, I came for you. Christmas yes. is for you. Naya, it, I came for you. Annette, I came for you. Eric, came for you, buddy. That's right. right. Jesus came for you. It's, it's personal. Josh, he came for you. Yes, yes. Right? And sometimes I think we think, oh, God so loved the world. So I want us to, I'm going to read the verse. And when I get to the part that says the world, I just want you to insert your name. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Yes. For God so loved Kim. Beth that he gave his only son. Yes. That whoever believes in him, will not die, but have everlasting life. Let's make it personal this Christmas. Jesus wants you to know that Thank he's got God. his eye on you, and he's watching you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. How has God made your relationship personal over the years? You know, I think when I lean into my place of pain, yeah. my place of disappointment, yeah. tribulation, mm. it's during those times when I really, God let me know he's there. I'm yeah, here. That's You're good. not by yourself. Yeah. You are not by yourself. And it's where I have that true connection. Mm, that's good. That true connection with him. It's during those tough times where as he connects yeah. to me, I draw closer to him. That's so good. I draw closer to that's him. So good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. I remember I grew up in church. I remember at a young age thinking God was was like the queen of England or, you know, the <laughs> king of England now, right? Where it's this important yeah. person that, you know, is powerful. Untouchable. Yeah, yeah, but not right. really too concerned with, yeah. you know, what I was up to. Right. And I remember, you know, being probably 10 or 11 and having that mind, sh uh, that, that shift yeah. happen about that, no, he is all of those things, but he also knows who you are. And uh, the thing I always think about, um, you know, we, we read that verse, and yeah. the world is kind of this abstract concept. We're thinking about earth or you know, whatever. Yeah. But while Jesus was on the cross, while mm. he was suffering, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he good. was picturing you. He was picturing your face and your good. story. It wasn't just this, we're do I'm dying for everybody, but it was, I'm dying for Kim, that's yeah. right. Beth, for Brandon, for it's Destiny, good. right? For Joseph, right? He saw us uh, while he was up there, right? He, and he he knew who we are 
yeah. before we even right. were on this earth yeah. uh, and died for us still. So that's what yeah. I think about. Yeah. You know, I, I hope that we can grab this morning that our God is a mighty God who does impossible things, just like he did with Mary and Joseph 2,000 years ago. God is still doing impossible things yeah. in our lives today. That's right. And, and God works in improbable places. That's right. He, he doesn't show up, you know, with the rich and the wealthy. He shows up in improbable places with right. ordinary, everyday people like you and I. And God, he makes his plans personal. Love he, he's just yeah. not getting at you a gift card. He, he, he personalized it. Um, and I want to know this morning, will we let God and unwrap who he is? And will we let him be our mighty God? Yeah. Will we let him be our mighty Thank God? Dismiss the table. Will you give him a hand this morning?